To see how seeding a cloud makes it rain or snow, it's best to get out of the cold and build a cloud in a box. Oh, yeah. no, right, how do we make the cloud? No, to make a cloud, we just blow in. Air contains a lot of moisture. Oh, yeah, look at that. The moisture in our breaths makes this fog a cloud of tiny water droplets. Now we've got a cloud just like we find out in the sky. The droplets, like in a real cloud, are super cool. Their temperature's below zero, but they haven't turned to ice. The freezer is very cold, about minus 10 to minus 20, but the droplets are not freezing. OK, so that's like a cloud that's up there that won't rain at the moment. That's correct. A small amount of dry ice is used to seed the cloud. It causes some of that super cool water to freeze. Oh, yeah, you can see the trail through there. Oh. Can you see what's happening? And oh, what's... Look at that. It's, yeah, it's, uh, you can see the lumps of ice forming. Yeah, gee, that's remarkable. The ice crystals grow, eventually becoming so large they fall. In the real world, they then become rain or snow, depending on the temperature below. All the ice crystals are already gone out, have already fallen out to the ground. Yeah, yeah, and we have rain. We have rain. No lightning, though. No, we don't make lightning. Now, the principles of cloud seeding have been known for a long time. They were first applied in the 1940s, and Australia's CSIRO was one of the pioneers. Under suitable conditions, rain may be precipitated by treating clouds with various substances. And back then, they actually did use dry ice. The material most often used is solid carbon dioxide, commonly known as dry ice. The dry ice is first broken up into small pieces and loaded into a plane. The Royal Australian Air Force is cooperating by providing flying facilities for this work. The scientists flew their plane just above the clouds that contained a lot of supercooled water. When all preparations have been made, the dry ice is placed in the chute and the aircraft makes a run at the cloud, when it drops the dry ice at a predetermined spot. The dry ice was later replaced by silver iodide, and CSIRO did experiments throughout Australia in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, even the 1990s. But they never found any really hard evidence that a significant amount of extra rain could be created. Skepticism grew. In the United States, they invested heavily, and it all has been pretty unsuccessful. Here in Australia, it was invested quite heavily, and very, very spotty results to be shown for it. So, I mean, there's a huge amount of skepticism in the field, and some of it's well warranted. It does stretch credibility a bit to think that going up there with a cloud and throwing out a very small amount of chemical, uh, grams really, that can have a, an, an effect over a wide area. But this cloud seeding program has changed things. Run by Hydro Tasmania, it's been going on for four decades despite the scepticism. And recently, some Monash meteorologists analysed all their data. We went back through the records, we looked at all the rain gauge data over the last 46 years, and we saw when they were seeding and when they weren't seeding, and we found a signal. We found a statistically significant signal. Finally, the world had the much sought after hard evidence that cloud seeding can produce a significant amount of extra rain. Meet the plane that's produced the results. It's had a few modifications. Now this plane flies in extreme weather conditions. It goes into clouds that a plane would normally avoid. And a problem with that can be a build up of ice. So all the leading edges of the wings are fitted with these self inflating sheaths. One push of a button, they pop out and break the ice off. Ice build up can also be a problem in the front of the props where ice breaks off, gets sucked into the engine and stops it. So a continuous ignition system has been fitted to prevent the engine stalling. All this is needed because the pilot determines whether the cloud has the necessary super cool water by flying directly into it. The way they work out if the cloud has super cooled water in it or just ice crystals is ingenious. It's done with this hot wire here. If there are ice crystals, they just bounce off the wire and don't lower its temperature. If it's super cool water, that sticks and cools the wire down. The plane's canisters are loaded up with silver iodide mixed with the highly flammable acetone. Burning this blend produces a nice fine mist of silver iodide particles. 
When the right conditions are found, the burners are switched on. Only tiny amounts of the seeding chemical are needed, insignificant from an environmental point of view. In the tanks, we have about 150 grams of silver iodide in a solution of about 27 litres of acetone, and that takes about three and a quarter hours to burn, so very, very small quantities. Cloud seeding not only has to work, it has to be cost effective. So only dams big enough to hold the extra water are targeted. This great lake here is is the really our prime candidate for, for cloud seeding because it's a, our driest catchment actually, but it's a very valuable water. Right. And the other one is Gordon, the huge storages. What, what I was going to point Get out the was targeting this, right, this and cloud seeding is, is economically viable. But overall, we estimate it's worth about three times the um, cost of the program. But it turns out, cloud seeding won't work everywhere. The reason it works in Tasmania is because of this cold but very influential part of the world. The Southern Ocean is huge. It's 15% it's of the Earth's surface. In the winter, it's going to be the windiest spot in the world. The clouds over the Southern Ocean are very, very peculiar. They don't want to freeze. I mean, they're super cold. You, you get them at minus 10, minus 15 degrees, and there's still a large portion of the clouds that are just liquid. That's quite a bit of a surprise to us. As the Southern Ocean air rolls in over Southeast Australia, it encounters mountains. And in just a few places, the right conditions for cloud seeding form. What the satellite imagery is showing is really there are three spots in Australia where you could do this kind of cloud seeding. There are the already seeded Tasmania and Snowies, but the third spot is not seeded yet. It would be in the catchment area, the Thompson. That would be the ideal location for this. In other words, the catchment area for drought-affected Melbourne. With the drought in Victoria now in its 13th year, any extra water would be very welcome. In Tasmania, it looks like they're getting about 12.5 gigalitres of water a month. They're getting a 5% increase over a target of about 2,500 square kilometres. If you could do that in Melbourne, I think you'd help a lot of people during the 